What's the crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and this is BDG. Big dogs got to eat. It's week 11. Waivers. We're talking. Apologies for getting this out a little bit late, but we want to make sure we do it right. Better late than never, as smart people tend to say. We're not very smart over here, but that's neither here nor here. So we're going to talk about quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, and some defenses to stream for week 11. You know what we have to do first is to tuck our shirts in. I'm wearing a jacket and a hoodie. This is going to be the most ridiculous tuck of all time. I feel like I'm a main character in, in like a Medea movie. Let's stop yelling and let's eat. All right, first up, uh, y'all know we don't really dive into quarterbacks much because we are a super flex brand, but Cam Newton is certainly available on your waiver wire. And seeing what he did on Sunday just reminds us of the type of ceiling he has, even on low volume, even on low efficiency. He's going to score touchdowns on the ground. He's going to score touchdowns through the air. And he did that on like six touches on Sunday. Scored a rushing touchdown immediately. Scored a passing touchdown on his first attempt. Cam Newton will get the starter snaps in practice all week. He will be the starter for the Panthers, likely this week against uh, Washington, Ron Vera. I will say uh, real quickly, there are a couple of defenses that have just absolutely like transformed. I think Washington's defense is, you know, obviously they lost Chase Young, which is devastating. So maybe this is completely fucking irrelevant, but they had turned things around. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, they were dreadful. They were pitiful on uh, on defense and they've been much better over the last you know few weeks, whatnot. But with Chase Young, I guess hard to be high on them. Tennessee was another defense that um, we had come to think about as a terrible, terrible defense in the beginning of the year. You could run on them, you could throw on them, but that's not the case. They've been very, very good on defense over the last six to seven weeks. Um, so don't think of them that way anymore. Jacksonville is the last defense I would probably start to think about a little bit differently. They have a very strong pass rush now. Um, so a lot of times you'll see that like defenses start off miserable and then uh, as they understand their identity a little better as the season progresses and they get the right mixtures on the offensive line and the linebacking group together, they transform their identity. Um, so don't be stuck thinking about some of these defenses the way that we came into the year thinking about them. Don't be stuck thinking about Cam is what we saw last year because it's a different situation, better weapons, much better fantasy production environment with C-Mac and DJ Moore and, you know, and, and Joe Brady as the OC. So uh, Cam Newton absolutely pick his ass up. I think he could be a top 15 fantasy quarterback going forward for the remainder of the season. Now the running back position is it's not that interesting. I mean, it goes without saying, but if A.J. Dillon is available on your waiver wire, you spend whatever you have left on him to try to get him because he's going to give you two high. You know, Aaron Jones likely out one to two weeks, they said. He's missing this game. I would assume he's probably going to miss next week as well. They have the bye in week 13. So you have a week 11, week 12, one to two week MCL sprain, then the bye. So I don't think we see him back till week 14. I think A.J. Dillon is going to give you top five fantasy running back numbers over the next two weeks with Aaron Jones out, which means, you know, you want to break the bank on him right now. Plus, you want to just own him going forward in case something else happens. Aaron Jones, he's literally a league winning type of player in the fantasy playoffs. Um, same thing, I think, could be said relatively to Ramondre Stevenson. Now, he is my favorite waiver wire pickup this week if A.J. Dillon is not available. Now, Stevenson, he popped. He snapped a little bit in this one. Damian Harris did not make it bike from his concussion. And uh, Ramondre Stevenson did, leading to 20 carries, 100 rushing yards, two touchdowns on the ground, five targets, four catches, only 14 yards. But we've seen him put up, you know, 40 yard receiving games multiple times this season already. He's got that three down ability. He's been better handling the ball. He's been better in pass blocking. So I think he'll stay on the field. Uh, the big note here with Ramondre Stevenson is, yes, when Damian Harris comes back, it is likely going to be a split. But I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see Ramondre Stevenson take more work than Damian Harris. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he played more snaps going forward than Damian Harris. I think Damian Harris will probably come back to being like a 10, 11, 12 running back or carry type running back for the remainder of the season with not a lot of pass catching duties. And we'll have to see what happens on the goal line, but they've shown a proclivity. Yeah, you'll like that shit. Proclivity to use Ramondre Stevenson on the goal line this year. And of course, in pass, passing down, um, situation. So Ramondre Stevenson, if he gets the role, he's the three down back. It's going to depend on Harris. Harris has been too damn good for them to just sideline him. But that being said, they play on Thursday night against the Falcons. Great matchup. Quick turnaround. Damian Harris already did not participate in practice on Monday. 
If he were to come back, he would likely have seen a limited practice either yesterday or today. So keep a really close eye on practice reports from the Patriots. If he's out again on practice today, very, very likely that he misses Thursday's game, which makes which Meek Mills, Ramondre Stevenson into a top, probably an RB1, probably a low-end RB1, maybe high-end RB2 at the worst, but he's going to be a three-down player, and this is a, a game script where we could see them give the running backs 35 touches in this one, right? Brandon Bolden still going to play a little bit of a pass catching role, but Stevenson's got that, you know, it, they, these concussions are tricky, man. Like you never know when a player is going to come back. You never know when the symptoms are going to linger. And uh, once you hit the one week mark, it's kind of like up for grabs. Like it's not a 50, 50 shot for him to be back this week or next week. It's kind of just play it by ear. Uh, one week concussion can turn into a three or four or five week concussion. And Ramondre Stevenson certainly got the upside to be a league winning type running back in this offense right now. Their offensive line run blocking in particular is playing so fucking well. They're one of the best run blocking units in the NFL at this point. Uh, and Mac Jones is playing really well. So the offense is, is, is humming a little bit right now, man. Offense is humming a little bit right now. And uh, Stevenson is benefiting from it certainly so he would be my favorite pickup this week mark ingram I, I could see mark ingram in a role similar to damian harris when kamara returns now Kamara's dealing with a, a pretty low grade i believe it's an mcl sprain. i don't know if we have a fact i don't know if we've been factually told that this is the truth but kamara missed last week's game i actually don't expect him to miss this upcoming game so mark ingram kind of just falls back into that like maybe jordan howard role or like boston scottish role where he's going to get carries. I, I still think we're going to see Mark Ingram go, you know, 10 uh, to 12 carries a game, maybe some goal line work. In this previous game when he took over, Kamara was out. He was obviously the featured workhorse here, and he had 14 carries, 47 yards on the ground, scored a touchdown, super involved in the passing game, which is what we've seen from him over the years with his time in New Orleans, right? Uh, seven targets, four catches, 61 yards. So that's always going to be a part of Ingram's game. He's good in that section of the game, despite being fat, you know? Fat boys can catch the ball, too. It's what we've seen Ramondre. It's what we've seen. Maybe this week's theme is just fat boys, right? Ramondre, Deonta Foreman, Mark Ingram. Uh, so Ingram deserves to be owned everywhere, especially if you're a Kamara owner. He will have standalone value likely going forward because this is a, a pretty good all-around team, right? They want to run the ball a lot. They want to play good defense. And Ingram will be a part of that, regardless if Kamara is healthy. Speaking of another fat running back, Deonta Foreman looks way more explosive than Adrian Peterson does at this point. In the two games since Henry went down, Adrian Peterson leads the backfield with 18 carries, Deonta Foreman 16, and Jeremy McNichols has like uh, 11. But when you look at the actual numbers, like AP's been terrible. 2.3 yards per carry, like 2.1 yards after contact per attempt. And when you look at Jeremy, uh, when you look at uh, Deonta Foreman's numbers, you know, it doesn't really take much more than just looking at the actual fucking game when you're watching it to see he looks way more explosive. Um, but he's up at like 3.6 yards per carry, which is not great by any fucking means, but it's way better than AP, uh, nearly three yards after contact per attempt. So he's stronger. He's getting more bursts. He's getting bigger runs. He's running with the ball stronger after contact. A lot of things that you like to see target wise. Jeremy McNichols has seen six of them. The other two have seen two each. So AP and Foreman have both seen two targets apiece in this time. McNichols six on the goal line. Uh, Foreman and AP have split it. They've seen four carries each inside the 10 yard line. AP is leading, I think, two to one inside the five yard line. So the goal line carries, which makes it a tricky situation, which is why I'm like not super excited about Deonta Foreman as like a high upside play, because you're, you're going to see a committee going forward, I think, for the rest of the season. Regardless, we might just start to see AP's uh, numbers and volume trickle down a little bit. But McNichols is still going to be in on third downs and fourth downs in a pass catching situations, two minute drills and things like that. It's like not what Deonta Foreman is built for. And then on the goal line, we don't really know if it's going to be AP or Deonta Foreman. I do think Deonta Foreman is the best early down option they have. And I think they'll make that move sooner rather than later. But what does that actually mean for fantasy? Maybe not a lot. They play Houston this upcoming week. So I think you could probably flex Foreman, but like we might see a game where Foreman goes like 14 for 75 on the ground. AP goes 11 for 35, but he's the one on the goal line that scores the touchdown. So very hard to predict what's actually going to happen. But it, I mean, it's just the only thing I can say is it's clear that Deontay Foreman looks a lot better. So I'd rather own him than Adrian Peterson at this point, but I'm not too excited about either of them. Wayne Gallman's the next guy up on this list and probably the last running back I will talk about unless you guys have any other questions about some other ones, which you can comment down below and I probably won't give you my fucking feedback on it regardless. I'll try. I promise. Um, but while you're down there, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, we're doing fantasy videos basically every single day. Wayne Gallman is interesting only for the fact that Cordell Patterson is likely dealing with a high ankle sprain, which is uh, which breaks my heart on many, many levels. 
but they have, like the Patriots, the Thursday night game. So almost impossible for Cordero Patterson to play this week. Maybe he gets back in week 12, but again, it is a high ankle sprain. It's not a severe high ankle sprain, supposedly. And I think this is what like Joe Mixon was dealing with. Remember, Joe Mixon had a high ankle sprain, but it was like a low grade high ankle sprain. And he, I think he missed a week. And then the next week back, he was pretty much fine. They did keep him at a lower snap rate, but he looked really good on the field. So could be a similar situation for Patterson, but it could be a multi-week injury. We saw Wayne Gallman get 15 carries last week. Uh, a lot of that was garbage time because I got their asses by the Dallas Cowboys. Um, so hard to get an actual prediction on how his backfield is going to split up going forward. I'm sure it's going to be a committee between Mike Davis, Wayne Gallman. Uh, but, you know, who's to say who's the more talented back here? So Wayne Gallman is certainly worth the pickup here to see how that backfield shakes out. Uh, maybe we get a clearer picture against the Patriots and then Corderell misses week 12 and we'll know who the actual start is here because Mike Davis is basically unstartable at this point in fantasy football. So Wayne Gallman, like him. Wide receivers will go through very, very quickly. Elijah Moore has been getting hot, scored three touchdowns in the last two weeks. Corey Davis looked really good coming back as like the alpha on the New York Jets. Don't know what's going to happen at the quarterback position this week. Not going to be Mike White coming off of four interceptions. Zach Wilson, maybe there's a possibility that Joe Flacco starts for the Jets this week if they don't feel like Zach Wilson is 100% ready to go. Makes sense that they would put him back in here now, you know, saying that he's healthy after the Mike White bad game, but it might be Joe Flacco again. Regardless, Elijah Moore is starting to have a little bit of a breakout over the second half of the year, so maybe stash him, see if he can get some repo with uh, Zach Wilson down the stretch. Could be a, a useful little playoff uh, nugget there for your lineup. Hunter Renfro continues to ball out and be the the most beautiful athletic specimen on the Las Vegas field and uh, continues to find the end zone, continues to see really high target numbers because Henry Ruggs is gone and they don't have a lot of passing options in this game. Marcus Johnson's been interesting for the Titans as the guy who's filling in for uh, Julio Jones. He went over 100 yards this past weekend. He has seen, I believe, five or more targets in a few straight games. And uh, he's been a downfield threat, so he's getting a lot of the big plays that Julio probably would have gotten if Julio was like 26 years old. Uh, so Marcus Johnson is going to have some, you know, going to have some uh, opportunities going forward, and he's he's become the wide receiver too behind AJ Brown. And they don't have much else in that passing game, right? They don't have like a really big threat at the running back position. They don't have a big threat at the tight end position. They don't have a wide receiver three there. So Marcus Johnson is definitely someone to keep an eye on in deeper leagues. I can't believe Spaghetti made his way back onto my plate here, but Robbie Anderson. Robbie Spaghetti Anderson, man. Um, with Cam Newton back, I'm not like excited about it, but the fact that it's a new, you know, quarterback, a new environment, a new situation for him, I think he deserves to be rostered in 12 team leagues to see what comes of it. What if Cam Newton just loves this dude? What if he just keeps chucking it downfield to him? You never know. Like the way he was with Nelson Aguilar last year, like Robbie Anderson could be that. Um, and it looked good for why did I say Nelson Aguilar? Nelson Aguilar was not on the Patriots last year. Who am I thinking about? I guess Jacoby Myers. I feel like Cam was like r relatively good for when he was healthy, throwing the ball downfield last year, and it's just uh, escaping my spaghetti fucking brain right now. But I think Robbie Anderson could be a thing with Cam Newton. So can't be any worse than what it was with Sam Darnold. Keep an eye on him. Score the touchdown. Christian Kirk also needs to be obviously owned. I'm assuming he's owned in most leagues at this point. Kyler Murray, I expect to play this week. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't really know. Uh, I, I think both of them won't be back, but it's possible that he misses time. Uh, he misses another week and Kyler Murray is back. And then Christian Kirk is obviously a much superior player in fantasy right now to Green and Rondell Moore. So Christian Kirk is there. Van Jefferson also would have had a much bigger game last night uh, had he stopped fucking dropping balls and stuff. They do have their bye week coming up. The Rams do. Uh, and then OBJ will be much more assimilated into the offense. I expect him to be the wide receiver too, but I think he'll have more opportunities Van Jefferson now than he did with Robert Woods in the lineup, who was such a staple of that offense to begin with. So Van Jefferson probably needs to be owned as well. Let's look at some defenses. Actually, one tight end I do want to talk about is Tyree Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. I talked about him on yesterday's Monday stream, which I recap every single game on Monday on a live stream, so make sure you're both subscribed and got them notifications turned on, like Zendaya. Tyree Jackson, quarterback turned tight end, super fucking athletic, got put on the IR at the beginning of the year, had a serious injury, but they kept him on the roster, activated him despite like losing a roster spot when they didn't even really know if they could. They, they love the guy, Tyree Jackson. They love this kid, all right? Really athletic, was awesome in preseason before he got hurt. Dallas Goddard dealing with concussion, could be out. Tyree Jackson could be the next guy up. 
this is more so for dynasty leagues or if you're in like a 16 or 18 team league or some shit tight end premium but dynasty leagues definitely think tyree jackson needs to be picked up go check him out on playerprofiler.com you'll see his athletic measurables are through the fucking roof all right defenses real quick the tennessee titans are home versus the houston texans now great matchup obviously tennessee titans have been again uh, one of the teams that have absolutely flipped the script on the narrative of their defense last six games they have averaged 11.3 fantasy points per game last six games cleveland is at home versus detroit cleveland's healthy i know they got whacked on sunday right like fucking boss mob soprano type whack shit on sunday but listen they're healthier now they're going to be angry coming off this uh coming off this l they're home versus detroit i also think there's something to look into with jared goff um he injured his obliques, his ribs. Something's going on there. There's a chance that David Blau comes in and is the starting quarterback for Detroit this week. So Cleveland probably be dropped by a lot of players after this last week. Pick them bike up. 49ers also look very good last night. They get to play at Jacksonville in week 11. So probably my third favorite on this list. I don't like taking teams that are on the road, uh, but the Jacksonville offense is just an absolute travesty at this point. So a good streaming option there if they are available to you. All right. Wanted to rip that off quickly. And uh, if you all have any other questions about the waiver wire, drop some comments down below. Our exclusive fab guidance article goes up on our membership site, bdge.store forward slash community, which you can get access to right now. Just go to the fucking website, the URL that I just said. Uh, Again, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And I shall see y'all tomorrow. I'm not sure if we're going to do a trade target video tomorrow or save that for Thursday. I might throw up a vlog for tomorrow. So thank you for tuning in. I love y'all. And I am the fuck out of here.